what is the best way to kill a human being? Have you ever thought of that question? No? Maybe you should. Let me tell you a story that explains why you should ask this question to yourself and try to find the, find the answer. When I was younger, I had an extreme passion for poetry. I liked to say well-constructed sentences. I liked to win arguments. Most importantly, I wanted to sound very beautiful most of the time. But also, I was in love with a girl that I wrote letters to. So I want her, every time she reads the letters I sent to her, to feel like she's the most special. Every single word is made for her. I want her heart, when she reads my words, to dance. Yeah. And at that time of normal life, love, school, family, something extraordinary happened in my hometown. People were walking out to the streets, protesting corruption, dictatorship, asking for freedom and democracy. I joined. I had a flower in my hand, and I went to the protest. I simply asked for my basic rights of freedom and democracy. And for that, the intelligence services of my country arrested me. The guards put me in a dark cell. It smelled disgusting. And it was so dirty. I don't want to sit. I would stand there in the corner thinking, how long will it take before they let me go? How long will it take before I can be with my family, before I can go back to school, before I can see that girl I love? And suddenly, <laughs> I hear something fall, someone fall. The guards were beating someone so hard that I could imagine them breaking his bones. He was screaming so loud, begging them to kill him. So the pain ends. Screaming with a voice that I recognize. They were torturing my cousin. And I can hear them breaking his bones. He will die. And if he dies, I will die. And even if I survive, I will be the one responsible to go to his mom and tell her that her son, my cousin, died next to me and there was nothing I could do. His voice is getting lower. I, I don't think that he is not in pain anymore. I, I think he may be dying. I lived with so much fear. And as soon as his voice totally disappears, it was my turn. They came to my room. They took me from, from it, and they took me to the corridor. And there... They put my hands behind my back. And they tied me with metals, chains of metals. And they hang me up to the ceiling. And the first thing that happens is my shoulders, they break. I, I was in pain. In extreme pain. A pain that I, I can't describe to you. Every cell of my body, every feeling in my heart, every thought in my head was hurting. I knew I will die. I will try to help myself by thinking about my mom would come and save me. My mom would find a way to bribe the guards so she gets me out before I die. 
they place me in a room with a lot of other prisoners. And the guy next to me is so terrified, so nervous, so afraid. And suddenly I could be sitting in that silence in that room when everybody is so quiet, waiting to die. And that guy would grab my arm suddenly, and I get nervous, don't know what to do. And he looks at me in the eye and say, they, they're coming, they are coming, they're coming to kill me, they're coming for me, they're coming to kill me, they're coming to kill me. And I look, I listen, and there's, there's no one coming. But he could think about nothing. He could imagine nothing, feel nothing but death. So he died next to me out of fear. And before they killed his body, they killed his hope, his imagination, his strive for a better life. Day after day, the pain was just getting worse, both physically and mentally. I would be standing in that square, thinking, when will my mom get me out? A month has passed, and she didn't get me out. Three months have passed, and she didn't show up. Half a year has passed, and I'm still in pain. And as soon as I started to lose my hope, the guards come in and deliver the news. We have killed your family. We burned them all to hell. So every possibility of hope was killed. Every imagination of a better life was totally destroyed. I would sit in my small square, quiet, terrified, not knowing what's going to happen next. If my mom cannot get me out, if humans are torturing me on a daily basis, I have no hope, I have no reason to lie, to stay alive, to be. And I would try to help myself, distract myself by thinking about the beautiful memories I had. I did have very beautiful childhood. So I could just think about these beautiful memories of the happiness I had with my family. Imagine the street of our hometown. Imagine the small things, even the girl I love. But at some point, I start to lose memory. I can't remember things correctly. And with the time, I lost my memories. I could not construct an image of my mom in my head. I started to forget names. I could not remember the smell of our kitchen or how our neighborhood streets looked like. I could not even find the image of the girl I loved. And freedom, the last time I thought about freedom was a few months ago. And that's when I knew that they have already killed me. There was a guy in my cell that had a very weird habit of drawing lines on the wall like this with his nail. Never had the curiosity to ask him, but once we were on the torture floor together and the guards were torturing him, and as soon as I hit him with the belt, he would be saying it very, very, very carefully. He would be counting one, two, three. And then we were placed next to each other in the rooms. So I asked him, you know, I heard you whispering something, counting something. What is that? And he says to me, yes, I was counting the belts I'm receiving, and I... Look at him. The belt is not a belt you use for your pants. The belt is cut of a car tire, so it's very heavy. It's very painful when it hits your skin. It's not easy to count such a thing, especially if you're getting 100 or 200 a day. So I tell him, and why are you counting the belts you are receiving? And he says, because for every belt I receive, for every pain I go through, for every injustice I experience, I'll be rewarded for that 
in this life or in the life after. Something that gives me the strength and something to distract my thoughts from being focused on pain. Then he would draw these lines of every belt he gets every single day. I didn't believe in the idea, but I wanted something to take away my head from thinking about pain all the time. So the day after, they take me, they place me on the ground, and then when I'm lying down like this and they hit me, the first belt, I, I say it quietly in my heart. I say one, and they hit me again, and it hurts, a two, and a three, and suddenly there, you lose. You, keep, you lose track of what you were doing. You lose your idea of, of your plan because it hurts so much. You go back to concentrating on how terrible it is, how much it hurts. And I go back to the room and I felt so ashamed of trying to draw three lines when the guy has like thousands already. So I go back and as I said, I'm not going to draw anything. It's embarrassing. I won't even mention to him that I tried the day after they take me and they beat me. And I count one, two, and I reach five. I go back to the room. It's so embarrassing. I want to draw five lines. And then day after day, I get better at counting because I'm getting used to it. My skin is getting used to it. And I count. And by the time I had a collection of counted 50 belts, I would draw 50 lines. So at least looks like they are many. I won't tell that guy that it's a collection of days of what I could count. And slowly... My head started, my thinking started to shift from focusing on the pain I'm going through to focusing on the rewards and the benefit of everything I could have in the future. I tried to make things as concrete as possible so I would have an imaginary garden in that heaven. In that garden, I will have these trees, these flowers that's growing based on the number of belts I'm receiving every day. So while I count 100 belts, then... I have to make it as concrete as possible to force myself to imagine a tree growing, a flower growing. And that was the first time that I felt I'm being brought back to life because for the first time I could imagine myself happy. Maybe not now, but I will be happy in the future. Most importantly, I will be free. I will be free. The dark questions that we sometimes have to ask ourselves are important because we have to understand the perspective of the other side to make sure we don't give the other side the outcome that they are waiting for. You should never settle for what you have. If you have dictatorship, you fight to get democracy. If you have democracy, you fight to have better democracy. If you have better democracy, you fight to give other people the democracy they're looking for. And the biggest threat you're facing is not someone killing you, shooting you. The biggest threat you're facing is yourself, killing yourself by killing your strive for a better life, killing your hope and killing your imagination. Thank you.